Hey guys, welcome back to Past Amazing. This video was sponsored by EA, and today we're gonna be taking another look at Command and Conquer Rivals. I made a video on this game a couple of weeks back, and you guys seem to be really excited about the release for this game. And now I've got good news. The game has finally been released globally by EA's Redwood Studios. It's a real-time strategy mobile game called Command and Conquer Rivals. You can click the link in the description to download the game and get a special early bird bundle now through December 10th. So yeah, go ahead and download the game right now on your mobile device. Okay, so basically in this video, we're gonna go through a brief overview of what this game actually entails. And um, yeah, I'm going to play a few matches. I'm going to tell you guys about this game and basically uh, some strategies on how you can start winning battles in this game. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it here. So first, the whole gist of it, this is basically a real-time strategy game in which you are the commander of an army and you're going to face another player one-on-one -on -one, uh, from anywhere around the world. You guys, you guys are going to battle it out and the winner increases in rank. So as you can see right here, I'm at around... Uh, 551 right now and I'm in the bronze league however as I keep going up I can get more uh, trophies and go to silver league or gold league it goes all the way up actually to Tiberian league which is pretty crazy that's like a lot of trophies but yeah I'm in the bronze league right now I've been playing for a while um, and uh, yeah okay so that's the thing we're gonna check out some replays right now and uh, sort of show you guys what I mean so I'm gonna go into my profile right here and uh, going to match history. Okay, so I actually won this most recent battle, but that was actually a pretty easy win. Uh, the few defeats here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this victory right here, plus 22 trophies. And I'm going to explain to you guys what this game is all about. Okay, so it's Past Amazing versus, I think I saw his name is, uh, yeah, Mad Hatter 0408. Okay, so here's how it starts. Uh... As you can see, there's three platforms, and those are the three triangle-ish shapes right there. Your goal is to uh, send troops in order to control the platform. So as you can see right now, I just built a vehicle that's called a Rhino, and I'm putting it on one of the platforms. And as you can see, it lights up blue, and that's my color on the blue team. So I actually sent it back, I guess. I don't know. Okay, anyways, it's right there, and uh, as you can see, I'm controlling that platform right now. Now, the player that controls the most platforms controls the missile. As you can see right now in the center there, the missile is loading up with the blue progress bar, and the missile is pointed towards the enemy's base right there. This guy first, he drops the first vehicle immediately. He brings it to the center platform. As you can see right now, the, uh, the whole thing lights up red because his team is controlling the platform. Now, I counter that with my own vehicle, on that platform, that platform lights up blue. And as you can notice, since we each control one platform, the missile is yellow. That means it's neutral. Nobody controls the missile and is just pointing straight up. Now, basically, your goal is to control as many platforms as possible. Uh, so, you know, if you control two and the other opponent controls one, you control the majority of the platforms. If you control one and the other guy controls zero, you still control more platforms than your opponent. So, that's the goal. And... Once the missile pro progress bar reaches its max, uh, so right now it's like, I don't know, one-fourth of the way there, but once it reaches the max, uh, whoever controls the missile at that point, the missile fires at the opposite player. So what you can see right now is the thing is actually paused because both of us control one platform, it's yellow. But once uh, my opponent sends uh, one of his vehicles or troops onto the platform on the right, He'll control two platforms. I will only control one. Therefore, you know, he'll he'll start, um, he'll control more platforms. I mean, right, right now you can see here, um, he for that one instant there, he controlled two platforms to my one. Now I control two flat platforms to his one. So I have the advantage right now. However, now he has units in the center that are actually making that whole platform neutral. So we each control one now and with one that we both control. Now I'm back to controlling two, and now that he has troops on there, he's uh, controlling. So you can see, he just basically goes like this. Meanwhile, the progress bar for that missile is slowly going up. I seem to have the advantage here, and in just a second, the missile will go towards its final stages, 
and it'll uh once it reaches the foot it'll launch the missile at the enemy player so i still control both platforms you gotta control them all the way through the entire missile you know, that guy was actually like one second late or no actually never mind because i still control the platform on the left but anyways yeah um as you can see the missile fired it does a ton of damage to the enemy tower now i just need one more missile shot at him to win this game so i've actually got a huge advantage right now because I built up my economy with Tiberium, which is the uh, which is the resource that is used to train troops and such in this game. So now I control all three platforms because look at all uh, all the stuff that I have on the board. My uh, these are called Wolverines, the things that are shooting right now on the platforms. Uh, those shooting super fast and those do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, as you can see, my Titan, which is the thing that uh, took out the enemy Harvester on the bottom right. Uh, that takes a while to charge up, but it does a ton of damage per shot. So, basically, yeah, that's how the game works. As you can see right now, I still control two platforms, now three. So, the second missile fired at my opponent, and I win the game. So, yeah, that is basically the gist of, uh, of this whole game. Obviously, that was a victory for me. I have not been so lucky in my other matches. As you can see, I've lost a few... Um, but mostly victories, and I'm pretty happy about that. So, yeah. Um, okay, now let's uh, show you guys a couple more things before we get into a live battle here. This is my deck, or the army, whatever you want to call it. And you can have, uh, you can have up to six things in your deck. So right now, uh, all the things that I have... I, uh, up here at the top is all the things I have in my deck, and at the bottom here is all the things I can put in my deck uh, that I have unlocked. So right now I have the rifleman right here. I have uh, what is this guy called? The missile squad right here. I have the rhino. I have the predator tank. I have the wolverine, and I have the titan. Okay, but I can switch the titan out for my um, zone trooper. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, but I don't want it because my titan's really good. Um, and the green, the green, um, the green symbol that you see with the number next to it, that's Tiberium. So the cheaper units are the rifleman and the missile squad obviously the titan costs way more at 150 tiberium uh, tiberium automatically generates for you during a battle however harvesters which you may have seen earlier um in the in the replay i showed you guys harvesters uh can double the pace of your tiberium production i i know this probably sounds confusing because i'm just saying it in all words i feel like it'll be a lot easier if i show you guys in a real battle so let's go ahead and just do that all right so we got our deck down we're gonna press battle it's gonna find an opponent for us and i will try my very best to explain this game while uh, i'm playing okay so it's past amazing versus so juicy i am on the right side of the map and uh, here we go. So I'm going to start off by building my Harvester that was 60 Tiberium. And it's going to automatically go towards uh, one of this these patches of Tiberium where it can start farming up by itself. Okay, so here's the goal. There's three. There's the Barracks, the War Factory, the Tech Lab. Obviously, I don't have enough Tiberium yet for the Tech Lab. Uh, but I'm going to start off with the War Factory. And these are where I can produce my vehicles. I'm going to produce a Rhino right now. And as you can see, I can send this Rhino to any tile that I want. I'm going to send it to this empty platform where I can start controlling it immediately. And as you can see, since we both control one platform, uh, it's neutral right now. Uh, now, here's the thing. Uh, what are these? Those are Riflemen. Luckily, um, if you actually hold, click on the unit, the, uh, the units that it has green, like... You know how those riflemen uh, have the green uh, green marks on them? That means the unit that I'm selecting is super effective on those units. So right here, I can just um, you know send this vehicle right here, and it's going to be super effective on those units. Now I can also click down here. So if I hold this, you can see it's strong against ground and strong against air. Uh, now he's sending more stuff my way. I'm going to... Okay, he's actually going to go ahead and do some significant damage because those guys, the Missile Squad, they're actually um, they're actually strong against my Rhino. But anyhow, I just sent out my Wolverine, um, and it's going to destroy that pretty easily. Okay, here's the problem now. Uh, he just got his missile on me, and that is not good news. We're actually going to go at... See, the cool thing about this game is you can control almost every aspect of it. Like, you can control where you want your units to go. Um, everything. So I can move my Wolverine here, I can move this Wolverine here, and base it's very, very free for me to do whatever I need to do. 
Uh, those guys are actually destroying my Wolverine pretty badly. I'm going to go ahead and drop a Titan, even though it's not super effective, but it does do a ton of damage. So hopefully that'll work. Um, okay, that's actually going to take a while to destroy because it is not super effective. As you can see, there's no like green marks uh, or whatever. Uh, so the yeah, Titan probably not the best choice in this case. And Wolverine coming back out super effective against ground units. Uh, the Titan is, by the way, only good on vehicles, so stuff like the Rhino, uh, the Titan would like pretty much take out in one shot, but stuff like ground troops, it's okay, actually, that was bad, that was bad, I was not paying attention, the missile actually got to full, and it destroyed my, destroyed my side of the base, so, oops, that's a defeat, um, that was kind of embarrassing for the first match, but, Anyways, yeah, we're going to get past that one. We're going to go into another battle, and I'm going to try to explain to you guys uh, more fully what uh, more about this game. Okay, so we got another match here. We're against HD13, and this time I'm on the left side of the map. Okay, so what I usually do for my strategy is I like to go slow, okay? Some people like to immediately rush out with troops and try to destroy the enemy, um, but I like to keep it slow. I get to uh, I like to take my Harvester out, start pumping up that Tiberium. Uh, I first build my War Factory. I don't usually use the Barracks, to be honest. Um, and I start building my Rhino, because that's usually a pretty versatile unit. It's good against um, ground and air, so that's pretty nice. So I'm just going to keep it on that square, start controlling that platform. As you can see, the missile I am controlling right now, because the enemy uh, does... Uh, now he's controlling one, so now we both control one. Now, as you can see, the fog of war is where I can't see what he's doing. So, I, although I can see he's controlling that tile, I don't know what he has on it because uh, my, my units don't have enough vision to go there. I have to send one of my units all the way to, like, the sender to see what is on that side, if you know what I mean. So, I'm going to send another Rhino just as an example. Uh, it's going to go towards the sender. As you can see, my, its vision of sight is increasing such that I can now see what he's putting on all those squares so he dropped a turret on me which is the thing all the way on the right of my bottom uh, i can drop my own turret but i'm not so he dropped a turret and now what i'm going to do is drop my wolverine because like i said wolverines are super effective against ground units uh the infantry so that's this is going to be pretty easy to take these guys out as you can see wolverine is gonna do a really nice job now i'm gonna drop additional wolverines and hopefully do some really good damage against this missile squad and also uh i think those were riflemen there okay so i'm gonna drop uh, take both my wolverines into the center here he's gonna drop a turret on me but i think my wolverine will actually win the battle out um let's see he sends out his own wolverine and i'm gonna actually have both of these attack him so that we'll double team on him and there we go as you can see the first missile is mine because I controlled two platforms to his one. The missile fires at him. I still control both. He's going to attempt to send over some more units. He actually has a predator tank there, which like I said, is super effective against um, my Wolverine. So that's not good. It's doing a ton of damage, but my Titan will be even better against his predator tank. So as you can see, one shots the predator tank. That is incredible. Uh, we're going to drop, we're going to drop two Wolverines down. Because we have a lot of uh, a lot of Tiberium to to spare due to our harvester, uh, so now we are doing really well in the center right here. The Titans doing a ton of damage, and that I mean honestly this uh, this whole match looks good for us. We're controlling the center platform. We still control two while he only controls one. The Titan does a ton of damage to vehicles, so it's going to take out that Wolverine in pretty much like just like a piece of cake um wolverine i'm gonna have the titan come over and give him a little beating there and there we go that's actually two missiles on him and he loses okay great so uh i hope that was a little bit of a better example for you guys that's how you play uh, we got 18 oh no sorry 17 trophies and um 45 gold two gasoline tanks which i'll explain in a minute and a thousand xp okay we're gonna continue gasoline tanks like i said allow you to order crates now crates uh, are ba basically contain cards inside them you upgrade uh, your your troops right here through through cards so right now my riflemen only have 17 out of the 50 cards required to upgrade it to level six so i obviously haven't collected enough yet um, but uh, cards do come in crates and right now i have a crate coming in two hours and 17 minutes you use one gasoline tank to get one crate and it takes six hours to uh i guess 
get to have the crate arrive for you to collect. Okay, so I'm going to collect that reward right now because uh, I just did some achievements. I unlocked a drone swarm. Okay. I uh, got a bunch of rhinos. I got talons. And what is this going to be? I got some more chocolate. Okay, cool. All right, anyways, guys. So that was um, that was just a game. Like I said, my strategy personally is to take it easy, take it slow, um, you know, gradually, uh, gradually build up my Tiberium. Then eventually, in the end, I have such powerful units, like you saw in the last thing, where the guy basically just cannot defend against me. I like to go that route. Some other players like to go the rushing route, where at the beginning they start building a ton of units, immediately start rushing their troops all the way to the other side of the map, and just start trying to like. You know, it ruined the guy's um, uh, Tiberium production and just mess him up. Some people like the rush method. I like the slower uh, late game method, which I think works better. Um, but anyways, guys, so there's a few things special about this game that I want to go over. Um, first of all is the fair play. Now, fair play is super important to me in any game. I do not want to be playing a game where, you know, it's, it's just super unfair to me, right? So... Uh, what uh, what uh, Command & Conquer Rivals has is a fair play system that allows uh, when you match a player that you're actually matching a player who's your level. Like, you know how so many games out there are you getting matched up with people like 20 levels higher than you? That's not happening in Command & Conquer. Let me explain why. First of all, there's a thing called unit level caps. As you progress through rival uh, matches, you'll be placed in different ranks. So bronze, silver, gold. I showed you guys those leagues. Uh, and within each of those ranks, there will be a unit level cap. So while you can have units above the cap, when you play a match, those units will be temporarily down leveled to the unit level cap. So that means you won't be facing some guy with like uh, cards that are 10 levels higher than yours. You know, you'll be, there will be a unit cap in your league. And as you climb through the ranks, level cap will slowly increase, allowing for healthy unit progression, but always preventing runaway power. This, more than anything else, ensures that superior skill and tactics are the ways to win matches. You're not going to be able to win just by having super high level cards, because there is that unit level cap. Now, also, another aspect of fair play is the win streaks. So, on your third consecutive win, you'll start receiving two times the normal medals for wins until you lose a match. This will help players reach the rank that matches their skill level quicker to help ensure better and more competitive matches. So if you're if you just started out your second account and you already have a first account, you're already super good at this game, you can easily progress through the lower ranks really quickly and make your way up to the higher ranks where your skill level actually is. So this game is a strategy game, it's a skill game, it's not a game where, you know, where just basically Whoever has the higher level cards, whoever spends the most money on the game wins. That's not how this works. Uh, okay, another aspect of fair play is progress milestones. Once you reach a new rank, so moving from silver to gold, uh, iron to silver, whatever, you cannot lose your way back to the prior rank. So even if you lose a bunch of battles after you make it to gold, you won't get demoted to silver. Once you get there, you're there. You know, so you're safe and uh, so you're safe and free to experiment with new units and new strategies, whatever your heart desires. There's no going backwards, so you can have fun with it. And uh, they're doing this because they realize it's very challenging to advance to that next big milestone and they want you to play with confidence knowing that if you get there you can celebrate the achievement without fearing further play you know it's not you're not going to have idle players who are just going to sit there not matching at all because they don't want to lose their uh, high trophy count you know it always encourages you to keep on playing uh, keep on reaching those higher leagues the last part of of uh, fair play is probably my favorite part it's the challenge battles so basically the essence of this is if you're facing a player that for some reason is higher level than you you know so if he has higher trophies than you significantly or if he has higher unit levels than you even if it's below the unit cap so let's say the unit cap is seven he has all maxed out uh seven cards you only have level three cards then he's more powerful than you or if he's like 100 trophies above you and you still get matched with him what happens is this is declared automatically a challenge battle by the game and uh, basically if you win the challenge battle you get double the rewards but if you uh, but if you lose the challenge, you don't lose any rewards at all. You don't lose any medals slash trophies, you know. So 
it's a challenge battle. There's no risk at all if you're the underdog. If you're the overdog and you get paired with someone that's significantly lower than you, you still play as normal. If you win the match, you get the normal amount of rewards. And if you lose, you still get the normal amount of rewards, you know? So if you're the overdog, nothing happens. If you're the underdog and it's declared a challenge battle, if they win, they get double the rewards. So basically, I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you're the underdog, there's no risk at all if you lose. You're not gonna have to complain about, oh, I just keep getting uh, mismatched. Because even if you get mismatched and you lose, it's not a bad thing for you. Uh, there's nothing you can do to trigger a challenge battle. It'll automatically uh, happen to protect you if either or both unfair criteria are met. So the unfair criteria being if they're higher, higher medals or if they have um, if they have higher unit levels than you significantly. Okay. So, I just wanted to explain fair play really quick, and um, I, uh, if you saw on the screen right now, I was just playing a replay in the background. This is from CCTV, which is accessible in the game. You can watch all these replays from top players, um, which, uh, which will help you develop your strategies, and uh, you, know, you can watch them for inspiration and stuff like that. And yeah, okay, so... Um, Lastly, I just wanted to say, if you want to learn more about competitive gameplay for Command & Conquer Rivals, you can check out the links in the description. And that's all I have to say for this video. I know this one was a bit long, but I really wanted to stress going through this game, getting you guys excited about Command & Conquer Rivals, which is available for download anywhere around the world right now. So go ahead and download it if you haven't already. Links will be in the description. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely going to give it a like down below. And also, make sure you guys do go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you have not already for more videos. And um, yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.